important role in uh, the position as spokesman for Indonesia's foot and mouth disease task force. The issue of this new outbreak of foot and mouth in Indonesia, well, when I say new, I mean, uh, after four decades or so, is making headlines internationally with neighbors such as Australia and New Zealand, I think, extremely concerned about the risk to their own livestock industries. And there is also huge concern for the impact on farmers in, in, in Indonesia. And we, I think we all saw how it impacted sales for uh, the recent celebrations for Edel Adder. So without too much further ado, I'd like to open the floor to the, to the professor who will uh, say some words and give a presentation, I believe. And after that, we can get down to questions, uh, which I know a lot of you will have. So uh, uh, thank you. So if we could open up to the professor now. OK, thank you very much, uh, Ed Davis uh, from GFCC. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon to all members of the press and thank you for coming to today's press uh, briefing session. And uh, to start our session today, please allow me to deliver updates on the foot and mouth disease, FMD, management in Indonesia before moving forward to the Q&A sessions. Uh, first, uh, to ease the delivery uh, of the information in this press conference, I will explain a little bit about the terminologies that will be used during this session. The term of FMD confirmed case refers to livestock that shows clinical symptoms or FMD or has been confirmed FMD positive through the RT-PCR test. Then uh, livestock that shows symptoms of recovery is given the term clinically recovered. This is because recovered livestock can still carry the virus in the oropharynx for more than 28 uh, days. Speaking of the recovered livestock as a carrier, cattle, for example, can carry the virus up to six months and three years in maximum. Then there is uh, the term tested and slaughtered, which refers to FMD confirmed cases livestock being slaughtered, while the term died in uh, FMD confirmed cases livestock that has cessation uh, vital functions of the body. Then to report the conditions of the province where there are no additional cases within a certain period is referred to as zero reported cases. And from 37 provinces, FMD uh, confirmed cases are identified in 22 uh, provinces as of August 1st, 2022. In the past three weeks, the red graph area relatively steady, which imply Indonesia managed to control the FMD virus transmission by preventing its spread to other provinces. However, there are currently additional cases that occur in 279 districts or sub-districts, so we must stand firm and constantly apply surveillance and biosecurity measures. Next, I will convey the details of the FMD infected provinces in Indonesia. First, there are four provinces with zero reported cases, namely Bali, Kepulauan Riau, DKI Jakarta, and South Kalimantan. In Bali province, there are 556 FMD confirmed cases. 553 cattle were tested and slaughtered and the other three cases were reported dead. Furthermore, there are 415 cases of infected beef and dairy cattle in Kepulauan Riau with 389 clinically recovered and 25 of which were tested and slaughtered and one case was reported dead. On the other hand, DKI Jakarta and South Kalimantan have handled 1,048 and 531 cases respectively, with 991 cases clinically recovered in Jakarta and 505 cases in Kalimantan, while the remaining cases were either tested and slaughtered or dead. Second, the government aims to continuously suppress the transmission of the disease, especially in the provinces with the largest contributors of FMD confirmed cases, namely East Java as province with the highest number of cattle, 
which is 172,306 cases, and West Nusa Tenggara, which is 90,015 cases, and West Java, uh, 48,907 cases, and Aceh, 42,584 cases, Central Java, 36,595 cases, and as the efforts to suppress the transmission, we are actively vaccinating the healthy livestock. In Indonesia, there has been a slight increase in FMD confirmed cases, while the vaccinations program is accelerating at over 300,000 doses between June 26 and July 10, uh, 2022. And this shows that the vaccinations activity has the ability to control the number of FMD cases. As of uh, yesterday, there are approximately 840,687 livestock that have been vaccinated in infected areas. And the FMD vaccine stocks are currently at 3 million doses, which were divided into two phases of vaccination agenda. For the first phase, which is 800,000 doses, were distributed and most of the livestock in infected areas were vaccinated. And during the second phase, there are 2.2 million doses that currently in the distribution and a few of it were already injected to the FMD susceptible livestock, for example, in uh, East Java province. And the government uh, aims to provide vaccination measure to all regions. In addition, we also involve private companies in procuring vaccines to accelerate FMD vaccinations. All the process are being handled by Ministry of Agriculture and also a Task Force for FMD control. And we also ensure that vaccination activities run efficiently and that all processes are clear and accountable. Lastly, we continue to make efforts to keep the disease from spreading to other provinces. And we strongly uh, encourage the FMD task force team to follow up on cases throughout their respective areas and to keep biosecurity measures as well. And uh, FMD has affected not only Indonesia, but also several countries in the world and World Animal Health Organizations, or WOA, has stated that the list of the FMD-free countries, which can be seen as entirely free from FMD or partially in a certain zone or compartments of each country. And currently, there are 67 countries listed as FMD-free countries where vaccination is not practiced, and two countries listed as FMD-free countries where vaccination is practiced. WOA has also identified zones or compartments of a country that are FMD-free zones. Brazil, for example, has designated several zones within its border as FMD-free zones where vaccination is mandatory and FMD-free zones where vaccination is not mandatory. In addition, nearby countries like Thailand, China, and also India, where FMD has become endemic, have been endorsed with an official control program for FMD by World Organizations for Animal Health. In countries where not all zones and compartments are free from FMD, even though the disease has become endemic and the official control program has been implemented, FMD outbreaks would still probably occur. And uh, several countries have experienced FMD outbreaks in the past two decades, for example, Malaysia, Thailand, China, India, and Brazil. And we are now taking examples for, from country close to and similar to Indonesia, which have managed FMD outbreaks, and, uh, but we are also adjusting to the current conditions of Indonesia. And dealing with the disease, affected countries have developed some strategies to maintain the disease under control. In Southeast Asia, the control of FMD has largely relied on vaccination as stamping out is generally impractical or culturally inappropriate for smallholders' production systems. Studies uh, have uh, demonstrated that FMD vaccinations would reduce the financial impact of FMD on smallholders' livelihood in Southeast Asia. 
Specifically, in Thailand, government has been supported routine FMD vaccinations two times a year in ruminants. Meanwhile, India has established nine ways of handling FMD outbreaks, such as vaccinating cattle and buffaloes at six monthly interval, performing publicity and mass awareness campaigns, identifying targeted FMD susceptible animal, zero surveillance and monitoring of animal populations on a random basis, mass vaccination, procurement of cold cabinets and vaccines, and performing a quality assessment of randomly collected samples from vaccines preparations, typing of FMD virus in case of outbreaks, and recording or regulating animal movement from unvaccinated areas. On the other hand, Brazil implemented some strategies in handling FMD, including active surveillance and monitoring, conforming to the guidelines established by the WOA, identifying the outbreaks conforming to the international standard procedures, supervision of animal movement, animal exposition, and other events in which a group of animals come together and controlling of vaccines production and efficacy. As Indonesia is currently battling the disease, various efforts in controlling the spread of the disease have been rolled out since the declarations of the FMD outbreak by the Ministry of Agriculture. The FMD virus serotype has been confirmed in Indonesia as serotype O, and there are several FMD sequence data found in several regions in Indonesia. And it is essential because it has implications for providing vaccines that match with the virus serotype spread in Indonesia. The establishment of the FMD task force under the National Agency for Disaster Countermeasures, or BNPB, that work collaboratively with the Ministry of Agriculture and stakeholders at the provincial and district uh, level also involve all the pentahelix was the evidence shown by the government of Indonesia as a rapid response to the crisis. The pentahelix component includes the army, police, the private sector, academics, experts, associations, community elements, and the media. Following the establishment of the task force, several policies has been published in the form of FMD task force circular letter to regulate that the establishment of the task force to the uh, RT or RW level, which is a very uh, le uh, low level, the zoning system for the FMD, and the traffic for livestock, fresh animal products, and processed animal products. Beside the FMD Task Force Circular Letter, Ministry of Agriculture also produced policies, for example, to regulate the cash relief given to the farmers whom affected by the outbreaks. And these are all policies and guidelines also used by all uh, task forces at the regional and local level in handling FMD in Indonesia. The government implements a tiered policy for coordinating the flow of PMK, uh, uh, FMD handling in Indonesia, starting from the National Task Force, Provincial Task Force, and the Regency or City Task Force to the minor level in society, namely RT and uh, RW. And the government also tries to suppress the FMD outbreak in Indonesia by implementing five strategies as multi-level policy, namely First is biosecurity. We are implementing all first line of defense measures to control the outbreak and carry it out to prevent the possibility of transmission or contact with infected animals so that the chain of disease transmission can be minimized. Disinfection or decontamination of areas and equipment on farms need to be carried out regularly. In addition, uh, restrictive rules must also be applied so that not just anyone can enter animal husbandry areas that are prone to FMD. And the public can take steps to disinfect uh, farms or cages and contaminated equipments using easy and inexpensive materials such as citric acid and boric acid. Second is the treatment. A recovery method that involves equipment such as drugs and vitamins. We are providing medicines and vitamins to treat the clinically symptoms and appear 
and uh, increase the immunity and stamina of the li livestock. And then third is the testing. The action to confirm the presence of the FMD virus in livestock and to confirm a virus, a detection tool is needed and is characterized by the fast detections, high sensitivity and specificity. Currently, we use RT-PCR technology to confirm a virus and will apply ELISA method after massive or post-vaccinations. The RT-PCR is a type of diagnostic test that detects viral genetic materials derived from the certain samples such as the nasopharyngeal or oropharyngeal swab test using reverse transcriptase enzymes and polymerase chain reactions. And we are uh, conducting pool testing in one farm to represent the situations on the farm. And RT-PCR testing will be carried out in the Ministry of Agriculture networks of laboratories, namely 10 veterinary centers, as well as 14 laboratories under the coordinations of the Agricultural Quarantine uh, Agency of Indonesia. We are also ready to pick up by setting up a network of health laboratories that have been used to support laboratory networks during the COVID-19 pandemic in Indonesia. And the fourth is vaccination. The process of inserting a vaccine by injection or by mouth into the body of stimulate the body's immune system and ultimately immunity against certain infectious diseases such as FMD. And this action is an effort to prevent the spread of the FMD through the immune system of an animal. We are prioritizing vaccination activity for healthy livestock located in the red zone with a large livestock population and a high number of uh, cases, as well as in the area in Indonesia that are included in the yellow zone. We are strongly encouraged green zone areas to maintain biosecurity system. And the fifth is test and slaughter. A slaughter practice in accordance with FMD handling requirements with the goal of preventing FMD transmissions or spread in animals, the environment, and the humans. Besides that, the FMD confirmed policy of testing and slaughtering livestock follows the government's recommendations. And livestock will be tested first, and if they pass the condition, the animal can be slaughtered. Furthermore, to slow down the spread of the disease and to protect the border between cities within the country as well as between other countries, the biosecurity measure has been strengthened. One of the examples was the placement of food mat and sprayer with suitable disinfectant in both international arrivals and departure gate of Bandara Ngurah Rai Bali, Sentani Airport, and also other areas, which is located in the free FMD zones. Papua also has placed disinfectant food mat in arrival gate to prevent the disease entering Papua. It is a gradual policy from Indonesia by prioritizing certain areas first, and surveillance and biosecurity systems are still in place until Indonesia has recovered completely from the spread of the FMD. In addition, the government of Indonesia tries to be as transparent as possible in communicating the trend of the disease, news, and regulations to the national and international public. People can easily access the update regarding the disease through the uh, websites. It's ttps slash siaga pmk dot crisis center dot id or https pnpb dot go dot id slash sebaran virus pmk. Before we move to the closing part, I would also share that the result of all combined efforts in controlling the outbreak can be seen from the steady number of infected provinces in the past three weeks and zero report of confirmed case uh, in several areas, which is Bali, Kapuluan Riau, Jakarta, and also South Kalimantan. I will close the sessions with additional information of FMD management in Indonesia. And currently, we continue to improve coordinations of the handling of FMD between the central and local government, so that in the future reporting related to FMD cases, will be better and describing the conditions of the FMD outbreaks that is currently occurring in Indonesia. And the FMD task force together with the Ministry of Agriculture have built cross-stakeholder coordinations and network in controlling FMD disease. 
as well as strengthening transparent and reliable data. And finally, in principle, the government needs to work together with the society to handle the FMD outbreak. Active participation from the entire society is needed to follow the recommendations made by the governments to control the FMD outbreak in Indonesia. We always urge all Indonesians to maintain biosecurity systems in place. Also, the society, especially breeders, can proactively report to service staff or village reporters in any of their livestock suffer from clinical symptoms of FMD. This is important so that livestock suspected of being infected with FMD can be immediately given follow-up actions such as physical examinations and treatment by the veterinary medics and veterinary paramedics. We would also reassure the international community that Indonesia is capable of controlling the outbreak. We are confident that the FMD virus can be immediately contained by the implementing the strategies that have been determined. It will conclude that the FMD management update for today, and I will continue to answer questions given by the press. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. Um, I, I think we had some pre-submitted questions. Um, perhaps some of them you've covered already. Um, there was a question about the latest data and how many livestock. I believe you've covered that, unless you'd like to say any more on that. Yes, uh, 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 there are informations in terms of the number of cases, as I mentioned. Uh, probably I will repeat again some of the important issues that uh, need to be uh, understood by the public. First is uh, the number of the cases. Uh, there are 453,906 livestock that suspected and confirmed in 22 provinces. And then in terms of vaccines, we already have three million uh, vaccines right now by the Ministry of Agriculture, which already distributed and injected uh, some of them with the progress in, in some areas like uh, East Java, where it's uh, FMD is uh, very uh, high cases over there. And now it's already reaching like 50% of the vaccination rate within one month or so. And uh, also the biosecurity has been implemented in several areas, as I mentioned, not only in Bali and also Papua, but also in Aceh, in East Java, where the airports that they have put the food mats and uh, spray, and also in some other <coughs> airports and also ports uh, across uh, also uh, uh, provided with the uh, biosecurity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just a question about whether you're still concerned about some countries introducing Indonesian travel bans because of fears about the disease being spread. This was sort of talked about a bit in Australia, at least in the beginning, but uh, I know it hasn't happened. But are you concerned about that? Uh, of course, uh, we are concerned as a nation, but also as, as part of the global community, that all countries in the world, uh, regardless whether it's uh, outbreak in Indonesia of FMD or other countries, that we need to apply the biosecurity screening for the international travelers. And I think uh, all countries, including uh, Australia, New Zealand, and others, and neighboring countries, all uh, aware and concerned about the outbreaks right now. But I think uh, we need to make sure that the international travelers understand the importance of the biosecurity and practice that so that when they are uh, going uh, overseas, will not bring the disease in or export the disease out from, from any country. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, a question we had from uh, an ABC previously was talking about, you talked about the number of affected provinces has fallen to 18, Bali, Jakarta, Riau, and South Kalimantan now recording no cases, but does this mean that FMD has been eradicated from these islands? Is it likely there is still a disease in these provinces, but testing isn't widespread enough? So basically, for those uh, four provinces, that there is no new reported cases. So uh, of course, it's not yet eradicated. As far as FMD, the virus can be circulating uh, or still inside the uh, livestock for the recovered ones. 
unless if it's tested negative with the PCR after uh, recovered. And of course, uh, the virus can be also still circulating in the environment. So that's, that's why uh, surveillance is important and Indonesia is conducting the surveillance uh, to see first is to prevent uh, the new cases to happen. Uh, and then second is that to make sure if the uh, transmission can be halted so hopefully that the uh, number of the viruses circulating will be reduced and hopefully later on that the uh, area will be free of the virus of FMD. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, please feel free to put questions in the chat. Uh, if you could say, uh, if you could give your name and who you're representing, that would be great. Uh, or you can, of course, try and put your hand up and I'll see if I can notice. Um, I, I just had another question about compensation for farmers presumably this has been you know very expensive for some farmers and they've lost you know uh, if, uh, i realize that it's not uh, i'm sure they they've lost sort of sales through this i mean we noticed during edel adder that sales had fallen and stuff is the is the government looking at compensating and how is the government supporting farmers during this period yes Thank you. Uh, so basically, the government is very concerned about the economy of the people, especially the farmers. So that's why uh, in this uh, aspect, uh, the terms that we use is not compensating. Uh, compensating meaning like for the slaughtered animal or the stamping out, uh, where it's for the healthy uh, livestock that being uh, stamping out uh, in, in order to make sure that the disease is not spreading. What we are doing is to provide support to the farmers where their uh, uh, cattle uh, or their uh, pigs or goats and sheep uh, infected by the uh, FMD and uh, test and slaughtered by the, by the government, by the authority to make sure that the uh, spread of the disease can be limited. And for those, we provide uh, financial support for the farmers and it's different value for the uh, buffaloes and cattle and also for the uh, goats and sheep as well as for the pigs and uh, hopefully with the control of the disease uh, the number of the supports probably will be also reduced uh, because the positive cases are also reduced thank you thank you uh, a question from amanda um, i see you put it in the post uh, let me know if you want to unmute you, but a question about vaccination program. Is it happening quickly enough? There's been criticism that 3 million is nowhere near enough uh, vaccinations given the potential for infection. Yes, thank you, Amanda. Um, we know, I think, uh, the availability of the vaccines at this moment in the world is also not uh, too, too much or too many, uh, but Indonesia is trying to get the access to the vaccines. Uh, so in the same time, uh, right now the government is making sure that the uh, several list of the vaccines that are uh, endorsed uh, by the uh, experts, uh, there are five uh, type of vaccines, and then we try to procure uh, those vaccines in the same time by the private sectors who want to protect their animals as well. And in the same time, uh, the government of Indonesia is now uh, making sure that we can also speed up the availability of the vaccines in Indonesia by possibly importing the bulk of the vaccines, but then uh, to fill and finish or to battling the vaccines in Indonesia. Because the veterinary pharma in Indonesia uh, have the ability to fill and finish in a large number of uh, vaccines. In the same time, the government of Indonesia is uh, encouraging the local uh, pharma, veterinary pharma, including the government pharma like Pusvetma, to develop or to, to have their own uh, vaccines. And hopefully, uh, starting September, several uh, companies or institutions will be able to have the local FMD vaccines, which of course will uh, add up uh, the uh, availability of the vaccines needed in areas not only in the infected areas but also possibly in the green zones when uh, we uh, are finished with the red zones uh, focus thank you so just to follow up from amanda on, on when do you expect to finish the uh, three million um, vaccinations 
we probably finish the three millions within uh, this month of August. If it's not, then probably half month of September. But in the same time, hopefully that the procurement of the vaccines from the private uh, sectors as well as the procurement from the government will add uh, the number of the vaccines available, including the international support that we receive. Thank you. And just on the, the point of international support, I mean, what else is there? That, is there more that, that you would like from, from the international community in terms of help? I mean, obviously this, you know, it's, it's, it's become a, it's spread to a lot of different provinces and it, you know, in Indonesia with so many islands is very difficult to uh, coordinate everything. So what sort of help can the international community give you? Yes. Uh, I think what we need right now, uh, first is we have to understand the FMD is not a new disease like COVID. Therefore, the knowledge of how to handle FMD uh, is widely known, at least in the veterinary uh, community in Indonesia and largely globally. So therefore, the international support that we would like to get is at least to make sure that the uh, support related to the biosecurity measures the vaccination measures, the treatment measures, and probably tracing, you know, can be done in a manner which is like COVID-19, where digital uh, approach can be used and uh, proper vaccines uh, can be distributed uh, more quickly, like the, uh, make sure that the cold chain systems are work in place. And of course, the international uh, people and stakeholders can support Indonesia to make sure that the disease can be contained and not spreading uh, everywhere to the world. Thank you. Thanks. And actually, another follow-up from Amanda on, and is there anything specific Australia is offering, is offering beyond its previous announcements? Uh, we are discussing uh, in uh, a bit detail about the uh, support from the Australian governments to Indonesia other than vaccines but also other measures. And one of the things that uh, have been discussed is to make sure that they, we can work together in uh, having the surveillance, uh, including uh, genomic surveillance, to make sure that we understand that the virus circulating in Indonesia from different animals are the same, or probably at least we know where uh, the spread of the uh, uh, viruses in Indonesia. And this is part of the surveillance that we need to have, not only to see the spread of the disease in animal, but also in the environment. Thank you. And are you also working, so you, you mentioned some of these global organizations that you were also working with. Yes. Um, we, of course, are working with the international organizations, not only from Australia, but also from other countries. But uh, we want to make sure that uh, FMD uh, is becoming a problem in Indonesia, but I think also in other countries. And we want to make sure that the biosecurity cooperation uh, among countries uh, in the same region or across regions uh, are an important uh, attention for all. And I think learning from COVID-19 and, and the spread of the COVID-19 in the world. And now we need to strengthen the biosecurity screening uh, for international travelers, especially for those who are just visiting the farms or uh, interacting with the, with the animals. And I think this is not limited to uh, Indonesia or people who are visiting Indonesia and returning home, but also for other people from other countries who are coming to Indonesia, especially to the green zones in Indonesia, because not all uh, areas in Indonesia are infected. Thank you. Thank you. And in, ter in terms of vaccinations, can Indonesia, if you said it can reduce the vaccine, is that, which companies are involved in that then, may I ask? At this moment, uh, we are uh, ascertaining the uh, capacity and capability of several stakeholders. One is the PUSFETMA, uh, which is under the Ministry of Agriculture. We want to make sure that their ability to uh, develop vaccines uh, by themselves and producing in a small number or later in a large number uh, have a quality of vaccines. Uh, second is the private uh, companies. There are several uh, private companies 
who have been uh, discussed about their ability to develop the FMD vaccines. Some of them are uh, Capri Farmindo, uh, Biotis, uh, Medion, and also Vaxindo. And we want to make sure that they have their capacity and, and now we counting on how much vaccines that can be developed while in transitions we are still procuring from imported uh, vaccines but later soon that we can be reliable or on the uh, national productions thank you thank you and uh, i'll just finish off the, the on the vaccines in terms of different strains of the virus this is a question from amanda does does that mean it's changing sort of in the same way as covid is changing i uh, suppose we make covid as our base uh, yes point. FMD uh, virus is relatively uh, uh, more stable compared to uh, COVID. However, we know that uh, there are several uh, serotypes circulating of FMD in the world, including in this region. Therefore, the, the genomic surveillance is important to be conducted by Indonesia to make sure that uh, from time to time, the serotype is always identified so in case if something introduced uh, different with the circulating uh, virus at this moment or serotype at this moment, then we are able to uh, change or to modify the vaccines uh, to make sure that it will uh, complement with the virus circulating. At this moment, we know that the serotype is serotype O, although there are other countries nearby that they have the serotype A and, and others. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a question from Bernadette Christina Munte Reuters. Um, she, she talks about the coordinating Minister of Economics talked about Indonesia would need 29 million doses of vaccines by the end of the year. Is that is the government close to procure that amount? And what are the challenges in procuring? And what would the government do if that amount of vaccine can't be procured? Yes. So basically, that's the budget that has been allocated by the Ministry of Agriculture to procure the vaccines. And uh, we will be uh, mixing the source of the uh, vaccines to make sure that there is a transition uh, source of vaccines, which is some of them later on will be from the Indonesian producers. But we want to make sure that the budget is available the capacity of the local uh, companies, uh, producers, farmers also increase. And then uh, since FMD will not be only uh, uh, supported or covered with the vaccines only for this year and of course for the next year and beyond uh, to make Indonesia eradicated from uh, FMD, of course we need to have more vaccines. So that's why the support from the local uh, producers is important and the budget allocated at this moment has been dedicated uh, for those uh, procuring vaccines, whether it's from the international procurement or from the national ones. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is from Diane Septiari from the Australian. With the current rate of new cases, does Indonesia expect to have FMD under control by the end of the year? Uh, we are very confident that the uh, increase of the cases will be under control soon. Why is that? Because among the 22 provinces affected by FMD, we monitor closely every day and we have with the task force as uh, what we are doing with the COVID-19, we always have a coordination uh, meeting with the local governments in those infected uh, areas, but also with the free zone to make sure that uh, they are protecting the free zones, they are protecting their areas. And for the red zones, we want to make sure that the case, uh, if it's underreported, if it's uh, delayed in reporting, we are uh, urging them this week to report all of them. And uh, we want to make sure after that, uh, with the close coordinations that the uh, reported case, because we use also army and police, that therefore we have two types of uh, reporting systems to make sure that we have a comparative uh, uh, data systems to make sure, and, and both at this moment relatively closed in terms of the number. Thank you. Thank you. We have another immediate question on 
um, foot and mouth. I just, I just, one of my Reuters colleagues wanted to ask about COVID, if you had any comments on when the, when we might reach a peak with this latest Omicron wave, and also when a fourth sh shot may be available for the general population. Yes, <clears throat> for COVID-19, of course, uh, in the last several uh, days or a week, we see that the daily uh, cases reaching uh, more than 6,000, but now has been reduced. But uh, we want to make sure that the uh, number of the cases will not be followed by the increase of the hospitalization rate and also the fatality uh, case. Uh, and, and at this moment, the hospitalizations and the fatality rate are under control, still low. But we want to make sure for public to understand that even the infections, we cannot uh, 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 allow the, the, the transmissions to occur. Therefore, the uh, vaccinations of booster is necessary. And, and now we uh, require for all people who are traveling as well as entering the public uh, areas, need to have the Paduli Lindungi uh, check, where uh, only people with full uh, booster vaccinations only allowed to enter or to travel. For others, they have to prove that they are uh, negative with the test. So that's that's what, what we are doing, and we are starting with the uh, booster, the second booster, which is the fourth uh, vaccinations for the healthcare uh, professionals. Thank you. But no specific timetable for the general population yet? Uh, it will be uh, increased from time to time, but of course uh, uh, now it's becoming uh, a little bit dif uh, 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 difficult to increase the, the coverage because of the uh, herd immunity at this moment relatively still high. But we want to make sure that uh, when it's expired, the herd immunity, we need to make sure that we push another uh, vaccinations, which is uh, the booster. Thank you. Um, Olivia Calva from ABC Rural has, has got, got us back onto foot, foot and mouth. Thank you. Um, are animals usually only tested when they show symptoms or are they tested on a regular basis? And if so, how often does this happen? The animal uh, usually since this, this disease, especially in the cattle and buffaloes, are easily uh, uh, seen in terms of the symptoms. Therefore, we don't need to uh, always test them with the clinical symptoms. It's, it's sufficient to, to say that this is uh, FMD or not. However, to confirm when the test is available, we can have it. But for now, the price of the uh, testing of uh, FMD of the RT-PCR still relatively uh, high or expensive. Therefore, the system uh, uh, applies uh, for the testing is a pulled uh, method because the spread of the disease is also very quick. The RT uh, is very high. Therefore, it's uh, representing only one cattle or pulled samples can be representing the whole a group of, 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 of cattle or animals. Thank you, Olivia. Um, and another question from Diana, the Australian. When you said that we will have FMD under control soon, is there any time frame the government has in mind? Uh, we are working on the time frame of six months uh, st uh, starting the task force, which is uh, we hope that uh, by the end of this year, and starting now that we can uh, control the situations that, uh, by having that the number of the cases reported is reduced from time to time in terms of the positive case and uh, recovered is also important to make sure that uh, they are recovered but then uh, with the surveillance maintenance of the surveillance uh, will show us uh, that the situation is under control and hopefully within six months of this uh, you know, period of time, hopefully by end of the year is under control. Thank you. Um, okay, I don't think we have any more questions and perhaps on, 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 on that note is, uh, is a good one. Uh, sorry, one, okay. Um, 
Yeah, okay. Well, if there aren't any more questions, then uh, we'll, we'll call it the end. But I, I think we certainly there's a lot of interest, as you can see from the international media on on this, uh, Professor. So we would certainly like to keep in touch with you. Sure. Um, i just like to, uh, in terms of the JSCC, I'd just like to point out we have a few upcoming events. I'd like to draw your attention to a virtual discussion on technology on August 10, which will be on the big next thing in retail and digital payments with representatives of Tokopedia and Bank Jago. And we also have our first mixer in person on August 18th on the rooftop bar of the Hermitage Hotel. So um, that's after a long time. So uh, urge anyone who can get along to those to join. And once again, I'd like to thank the professor for his time. And uh, I'm sure that we'll uh, be in touch further on, on, on this very important issue. Yes. OK, thank you very much, uh, Ed Davis, and all of the international journalists who joined with this uh, press briefing. And I hope that uh, the information that we provide to you is clear. And we will maintain uh, the uh, press briefing for the international forum. Uh, frequently so that uh, you all have the updates of how the Indonesian governments uh, control FMD. So thank you very much. Uh, selamat sore. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.